in his talk, he misrepresented Islam. And I think that it's been a while since I heard a talk that was as misleading and misinforming as this one. Those who know me know so well that I'm always respectful of scholars of other religions. When I respond to them, I'm always very respectful, except if anyone crosses the red lines. I never humiliate honest people, even if they were wrong. But deceivers and charlatans must be exposed, at least to their own audience, who think that they are credible and, and, and trust their genuineness and their knowledge. Uh, his name, or the name of the speaker, according to the website of his church, is Mari Mari Emmanuel. Mari is a Syriac title that means Lord and is used usually in Christianity for saints like Mari Morcos, Mari Gerges. Those were people who suffered torture and persecution and they persevered. So that's why after they died, people gave them this title which they deserved because they were truthful and they never lied. They were humble people and none of them gave himself that title. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was wronged in one or more maybe of his talks, but at least in the one that I heard, Prophet Muhammad was wronged. And no one should spread lies and misconceptions around the most beloved man in the world and expect that his misconceptions won't be refuted. Let's hear bits and pieces of what he said. That's the first video I wanted to hear. In the Quran, it says about the Lord Jesus, according to their book, I speak Arabic, I write Arabic, I read Arabic. <laughs> I'm educated in the Arabic language. What is Muhammad is saying in the Quran? He's saying, but Jesus or Isa, Jesus, but Jesus, son of Mary, is the word of God and a spirit of God. Now, I ask Muhammad, where did you get this from? But Jesus, son of Mary, is the word of God and a spirit of him. Oh, John, the fourth living creature which is the flying eagle, the gospel of John. John chapter one, verse one, the very beginning of the gospel. In the beginning was the word. Look at what Muhammad is saying. Jesus, son of Mary, is the word of God. Okay, don't lose track of this. He is the word of God. John, six centuries prior to him, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So what are you trying to say, Muhammad? Are you saying Jesus is God? That's what you're saying. You got it from the Gospel of John. Not from Allah, from the Gospel of John. Okay, uh, so he clearly said that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, copied this from the Bible, from the Gospel of John. But at the same time, in the same talk, he acknowledged that Muslims deny the divinity of Jesus and that they just believe in him as a prophet, which is contrary to the biblical teachings, according to him. Listen, it's definitely contrary to the biblical teachings. Listen to this video as well. In the Bible is the son of God, is God. That Jesus in the Bible was crucified and he is the savior and the redeemer of the world. Do you believe in this or not? Don't tell me he's a prophet. What prophet? What am I going to do with a prophet? A prophet can't help himself, let alone help me. But it's ironic, ironic how they come back and they say that Isa went up to heaven alive and will come back alive. Muhammad is dead and rotted in the grave. Yet this one went up alive and when he comes back, he will judge the living and the dead. I just want to know. Who is the judge of the living and the dead? Isn't it God? Would God give his job to a prophet? So is God now unemployed? I'm asking, is God unemployed? Who is the judge? They'll say God, but you just told me this prophet is going to judge the living and the dead. Firstly, 
he denied that Jesus is a prophet. While this is mentioned clearly in the Bible, uh, listen again to this clip where he is denying the prophethood of Jesus, son of Mary. Jesus in the Bible is the son of God, is God. That Jesus in the Bible was crucified and he is the savior and the redeemer of the world. Do you believe in this or not? Don't tell me he's a prophet. What prophet? What am I going to do with a prophet? A prophet can't yeah. help himself, let alone help me. Don't tell the prophet. Are you sure? Mr. Emmanuel, that Jesus was not a prophet. This is expressed in many uh, 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 verses of the Bible. In Luke 13, 33. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must proceed on my way, for it would not do for a prophet of God to be killed except in Jerusalem. In Luke 4, 24. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. In Luke 4, 43. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. I was sent for this person, that's Jesus, son of Mary, talking here. Sent. Can God be sent to do something? Who can send God? Since Jesus said, for I was sent for this purpose, then therefore God sent him. Ask any child. God sends God or God sends prophets? Who is now closer to the teachings of the Bible? Islam or Mr. Emmanuel? Secondly. Muslims believe that the bodies of the prophets and the saints do not rot in their graves and are not absorbed by the earth. So don't you ever say again that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or any other prophet rot in their graves. This is disrespectful for the prophets and offensive for Muslims. Thirdly, yes, most Muslims believe that Jesus, son of Mary, is coming back before the end of time. But not one Muslim believes that he will be judging people on Judgment Day. Most Muslims believe that Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is coming back to kill the Antichrist, the Dajjal, who is spreading false ideologies, corruption, but not to judge anyone. Actually, the Quran says that he himself, Jesus himself, will be questioned. God will ask him in front of the Christians and in front of all people. According to the Quran, in uh, chapter number 5, sign number 116. O oh, Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to mankind, take me and my mother as two gods apart from Allah? And Jesus will defend himself by clearing himself from this horrible allegation by answering in the same sign. Sign number 116. Highly exalted are you. It is not for me to say what I have no right to. Had I said it, you would have known it. You know what is in my inner self, and I do not know what is within yourself. You are indeed the superb knower of the hidden realms. So who is the judge and who is the judged. When God will question Jesus himself and Jesus will defend himself and clear himself from this abomination in a way that will make everyone who said that Jesus claimed to be God look like a liar. I challenge Mr. Emmanuel to find a statement made by Jesus in which he says clearly, I am God or worship me. Don't give me vague statements which can be interpreted in several ways. Like, I am the way. Well, Muslims believe that Jesus is the way. Like Moses, like Muhammad, like Abraham, like Noah. Following the prophets is the way. Following the prophets, not charlatans. Now, back to the main point, which is claiming that Prophet Muhammad was copying from the Bible. The book of John. Mr. Emmanuel, you're a good speaker, and I know 
how you convince your audience, or to be more precise, how you deceive your audience. And I think that by now, you know that I know how you deceive your audience with your lies. You are a good uh, manipulator. You're, you're, you're a good manipulator. You manipulate text. And I will expose your manipulation soon. So brace yourself. But before doing that, I want to thank you as well because you taught me something new. Muslims prove the truthfulness of Prophet Muhammad in many ways using many strong arguments, but you inspired me a new argument that we totally forgot about. We do not believe that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is God, nor that he wrote the Quran. We believe that he received the Quran, which is the final word of God from God through the angel Gabriel. Therefore, by proving that he did not write the Quran, we do prove that he received it from God. In other words, by proving the authenticity of the Quran, we prove the truthfulness of Prophet Muhammad and definitely the authenticity of Islam. There are many proofs on the authenticity of the Quran. For example, the Quran foretold future events that no one could have guessed, like the victory of the Romans over the Persians within a period of less than 10 years. And that was revealed uh, at a time when the Roman Empire was collapsing everywhere and losing its territories to the Persians. It's like when the USSR was collapsing, someone appears and says, the USSR will be back within 10 years at least, or, or, or more. I'm sorry, within less than 10 years. Uh, it's very risky to say so. Had Muhammad been an imposter who wrote the Quran himself, then claimed that he had received it from God, he would, had, he would have never taken the risk and write something like that. Because what if the Romans did not defeat the Persians? And why would he say that it will definitely happen within less than 10 years? Why would he take the risk and jeopardize his reputation and integrity? But the Quran is not his own handiwork. He cannot omit any word from it. He just delivered it as he received it from Allah. Allamul Ghuyub, the superb knower of all the hidden realms. And what he foretold happened exactly as he said. In his infamous talk, Mr. Emmanuel wanted to bash Prophet Muhammad, but instead of bashing him, he served him. He said that Muhammad took the idea of Jesus being the word of uh, God uh, being the word uh, from the gospel of John. In the beginning, there was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Everyone knows that this goes against the most basic Islamic beliefs. So why would Muhammad take these words, particularly from the Bible, and put them in the Quran to embarrass himself? To give a strong weapon to his own opponents to fight him with it? Any imposter who claims to be receiving revelation from God and is copying previous scriptures should stay away from the parts that may sound contradicting to his teachings and beliefs. And this definitely sounds against the basic teachings of Islam. And that's why we do effort to explain to Christians what it really means. So why didn't Prophet Muhammad stay away from it then? Why would he go to a passage like that that will be very controversial and copy it. Simply because it is not his own handiwork. He cannot pick and choose. God told him in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal rasoolu ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbika wa illam taf'al fama ballagta risalatah wallahu ya'asimuka min al-nas. In chapter number five, uh, sign number uh, 67, God says, O messenger, proclaim what was sent down to you from your Lord, but if you do not, then you will not have proclaimed his message. He cannot omit anything. He has to proclaim everything he received. Let me now explain to you what it means. The word, we have now a problem with the word kalima, word, Jesus being a word of God, 
in the Quran and ruh, which is the spirit of God as well. The word kalima or word in the Quran means a miracle or a sign of God. Saying that Jesus, son of Mary, peace be upon him, is the word of God means that he was a sign of the mightiness of God. In Surah At-Tahrim, ayah number 12, God says, وَمَرْيَمَ بِنَةَ عِمْرَانَ الَّتِي أَحْصَنَتْ فَرْجَهَا فَنَفَخْنَا فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِنَا وَصَدَّقَتْ بِكَلِمَاتِ بِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّهَا وَكُتُبِهِ وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ It means, Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, we breathed into her of our spirit, she testified to the truth of the words, with an S, with the truth of the words of her Lord and of his revelations. She was one of the devout. Hmm. Words with an S. So Jesus is the word of God, but not the only word of God. How many words are there? Two, three, four, or an infinite number? Let's see. Also in the Quran, in Surah Al-Kahf, the cave, chapter cave, it's, uh, God says, قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ الْبَحْرُ مِدَادًا لِكَلِمَاتِ رَبِّي لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا Say, if the sea were to become ink for the words of my Lord, the sea would run out before the words of my Lord run out. So, the words are infinite. One of them is Jesus, son of Mary. And the words mean sign of the mightiness of God, the knowledge of God. The wisdom of God. So it's really strange how you manipulate things like that and try to convince people and Christians abusing their uh, ignorance of the Arabic language and of the Quran. Uh, okay. So according to this, sign of the Quran. He is a word of God and a spirit of God. And that as well was mentioned by Mr. Emmanuel, trying to give an impression to his audience that the so-called divinity of Jesus is a Quranic belief, is a Quranic teaching. No, it's not. Jesus was called the spirit of God because, as I mentioned previously, in sign number 12, in chapter number 66 of the Quran, Jesus came as a result of God breathing of his spirit into Mary here. We breathed into her of our spirit. Mary, a daughter of Imran who guarded her chastity, we breathed into her of our spirit. So Jesus came as a result of God breathing of his spirit into Mary. And again, Jesus is not alone in that. God said that about Adam actually. In Chapter number 38 of the Quran, God says, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي خَالِقٌ بَشَرًا مِّنْ طِينٍ فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Here we go, 38, 71 and 72. Recall when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I am creating a human being from clay. So when I have formed him and breathed into him of my spirit, fall prostrate before him. So God told the angels, I am creating a human being from clay. So when I have formed him and breathed into him of my spirit, this is Adam. We are not talking about Jesus here. Adam as well received the spirit from God. And the archangel Gabriel is mentioned as a ruh as well, which is this spirit. So this spirit is also one of the names of archangel Gabriel. Several times in the Quran. I don't know. It, Mr. Emmanuel. Mr. Emmanuel, you stepped into a minefield by disrespecting Allah, Prophet Muhammad, and the Quran. And for Muslims, this is a red line. You've crossed. We speak. We just speak. And through our speech, Islam was spread. Not by the sword, as you mentioned and you uh, described wrongly, actually, the flag of Saudi Arabia. What does Saudi Arabia have to do with Islam? Come on. 
the sword was used to defend the oppressed. But I'm not going to defend Muslims today. Rather, I have to defend Allah and his messenger and his word. Islam spreads among Christians today because they realize that we, were, we, we are not asking them to leave the religion of Jesus. Ever. I would never, ever ask any Christian to leave the religion of Jesus or Mary. We ask them to join Jesus and Mary in their religion for the first time. But we will talk about that later on. I'm sorry, Mr. Emmanuel, but I have to show your audience how you deceive them. So if you are hearing this video now while driving, I suggest that you pull over. In his lecture, he told his audience who trust him that Muhammad wrote in the Quran that Jesus is the word and the spirit of God. And then he bragged about how he masters the Arabic language. And since he is originally Iraqi from Baghdad, then he really knows Arabic, Arabic well. I'm, I'm not denying that. But he manipulated the text of the Quran, the Arabic text of the Quran, making use of the ignorance of his audience of the Quran and of the Arabic language. And I'm going to show you how. He played the, I'm sorry, the dirty cut and paste game. He cut a little tiny part of a long passage of the Quran to manipulate it. He just used this part. He read it wrongly and, and said it literally, which means the word of God and a spirit from him instead of saying his word and a spirit from him. But it doesn't matter. It, it's an innocent mistake. I don't have a problem with that. But since we don't have the word or the spirit from him in the Quran related to Jesus except once, So it is obvious that he was quoting this passage of the Quran. Let me show you what his eminence did to deceive his audience. This is the part which he used. Hmm? Um, I know that most of you may not know English or may not know Arabic, but still I'm going to show you the whole passage, the whole sign uh, or verse, as you say in the Bible, but we call it ayah, which is a sign of God, every unit of text in the Quran. I'm going to show you the whole sign of the Quran and show you what he omitted and what he used. Here is the uh, whole sign from the Quran. The red words is what he used. And his word, which he cast to Mary and a spirit from him. And he omitted all this green uh, space. This, uh, this, he omitted 48 words and used only six words. Please go check yourselves. Check for yourself. Chapter number four. Uh, sign number 171. Now I'm going to show you the English translation. And you will see what he used and what he omitted and what both of them mean. Here. The, uh, the red part is what he used. And his word that he has cast to Mary and a spirit from him. And the green part is what he did not tell you. Is what he hid from his audience. Let's see now what he said, what he hid. O oh, people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion and do not say about Allah except the truth. By the way, the word Allah means God in Arabic language, Allah in Hebrew. Even uh, Arab Christians use the word Allah as well. The word Allah exists six times in the first paragraph in, of Genesis in the Arabic version of the Bible. So when you hear the word Allah, it doesn't mean the God of Muslims. It means the God of all people, all people of the scripture, the Bible, all people of the scripture do not exaggerate in your religion and do not say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is indeed nothing but Allah's messenger. 
And the next part, this line, the red line, is what he used. And his word that he cast to Mary and a spirit from him. To, to give an impression for his audience that the divinity of Jesus is a Quranic teaching. And then he hit the next. So believe in Allah and his messengers and do not say three, refrain. That is better for you. Indeed, Allah is only one God. Highly exalted is he that he should have a son. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And Allah suffices as a trustee. He omitted 80 words, over 80 words in the English translation. And he used only 13 words, which, of course, are the translation of the six Arabic words. See what he does to deceive his audience and to give the impression that the Quran states the divinity of Jesus, agrees with the divinity of Jesus. You heard him saying, what are you trying to say, Muhammad, that Jesus is God? That's what you are saying. And you got it from the gospel of John, not from Allah. The part which Mar Mari Emmanuel omitted on purpose says exactly the opposite. Listen again and hear the tone of anger of, God's, uh, of God in, that is very clear in his speech. God is angry of attributing a son to him. Hear the blaming of Christians for exaggerating in their religion. Yes, he is a word of God and a spirit from him, but not the only word and not the only spirit. And your exaggeration created a new religion. That's what the Quran says. I'm not now discussing this with you, but I'm discussing the integrity of Marmari Emmanuel. These are the main points which Jews differ with Christians upon and Muslims differ with Christians upon them as well. Those before Christians and those who came after Christians differ with Christians on the uh, uh, divinity attributed to Jesus. I will read it once more for you to sense the tone of God and see for yourself. Is God here agreeing with, uh, with, uh, with the teachings of, uh, of Christianity or disagreeing? O oh, people of the scripture, the Bible, do not exaggerate in your religion and do not say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, son of Mary, is indeed nothing but Allah's messenger and his word that he cast to Mary and a spirit from him. Nothing more than that, which means not a God. Continue. So believe in Allah and his messengers and do not say three, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the messenger, you made him a son of God and worshipped him. You made him God himself. And the Holy Spirit, which is an angel, you had. You made him God as well and you worshipped him as well. And then God says, refrain. That is better for you. Can you sense the tone of anger? You are making God angry with this abomination. And then he's telling you that this is, the Quran agrees with this. The Quran definitely disagrees with that. Continue. Indeed, Allah is only one God. Highly exalted is he, that he should have a son. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And Allah suffices as a trustee. Do you see the difference between what the meaning of what he read to you from the passage of the Quran and what it really means? It really means the opposite exactly. <laughs> Do you know that the next the next sign, sign number 172, says the following. Let me show you what he also hid from you. Never shall the Messiah disdain to be a servant of Allah, nor shall the angels who are brought near. And whoever disdains his worship and acts arrogantly, he will herd them to himself altogether. I really don't know. How can one do that to himself? I wonder, he, he didn't Mr. Emmanuel think that someone will expose his lies? I wonder why did he do this to his audience? There is only one of two reasons. There cannot be a third one. Either he did this on purpose to deceive his audience or out of ignorance by quoting some Islamophobes without checking the truth of what they say about Islam. 
So whether on purpose to deceive his audience or out of ignorance, which, which means that he, he had the homework to do before throwing on people things like that. So can you tell us, Mr. Marmari Emmanuel, if you are a deceiver or an ignorant? And then after bashing Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he bashed Arius. He said that denying the divinity of Jesus is heretical and that Islam came after the heresy of Arius, who was the first one to deny the divinity of Jesus. Listen to him. And I'm going to answer all of this uh, 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 at the end, or actually in the next video, because I don't want this video to be longer than this. Listen to what he said about uh, relating Islam to Arianism. Islam came after heresy. Heresy began from after 325 till 635. Over 300 years of heresies came, left, right, and center, and then Islam came. Let me show you also what he said about Arius, because he meant Arius. Heresy, false teachings, nothing to do with Christ. The first person that came after the Roman Empire converted to Christianity, Arios. And by the way, Arios was a clergyman in the Coptic Church. He was from Alexandria, Egypt. Okay, so he is relating Islam to Arianism. And I don't have a problem, by the way, with that, because history has been written by the victorious. So they labeled themselves as the Orthodox and labeled those who differ in opinion with them as heretics. And it's time that Christians learn the truth about Arius as well in the next video. So, Mr. Emmanuel, brace yourself. See you. Anyway, um, I'm heading tomorrow to Canada, so I won't be able to make the next video before at least two or three weeks. Salam and good day.